NASCAR's, in quotation, playoff format is something that I have not liked since it was introduced in 2014. This whole win and you're in, 16 drivers make it in to the chase, elimination style knockout out system, I don't like it. And uh, there's a lot of reasons why. Uh, it could date back to 2014 when the system was first introduced. I always tried to give the system a fair chance at um, you know, seeing how it worked. In fact, most of 2014, I looked forward to the chase to see how it would play out. But the further into the chase we got, the more I realized how messed up the system was and how it rewarded a good race or two. So, in 20, the, the, the big story, the, the, the whole thing about this is 2003. That's when this whole chase stuff happened. Matt Kenseth dominated the championship. He never lost the championship league after like race three, I think. He ended up winning the championship uh, a race early. So NASCAR said, we have to do something because apparently someone winning a championship, even though they deserve it, uh, we have to change that. Introduce the 10 race chase. 10 drivers make it in, top 10 points. They ballot out over 10 races. That was, once again, a fine format. Uh, it still produ it still uh, had consistency in mind. In fact, the early stages of um, the early stages of the uh, reset was how you were in points. Every every spot had the top ten. So if you were the points leader, you were five points over second. Second was five points over third, and so on and so forth, down to tenth. It definitely helped in terms of you know if you were higher points, you got a little bit of an advantage. It's like one one position I think back in that day. So, I mean, it wasn't too big of an advantage, but still some advantage. Um, it ended up being like that until about 2007, 2008, when they introduced a 12-man chase, the top 12 in points guy, and that was kind of a little weird, uh, considering it's top 12, that's kind of a weird number to take. But once again, it was all right. They still, uh, you know, it wasn't like it was any unfair or anything. Come 2011, an even better chase format, which in my opinion is the best chase format, was produced. The 2011, you had one point per position uh, in terms of points, and then the top 10 of the points made it plus two wild cards from 11th to 20th if you had a victory, which was something that I enjoyed greatly. And in my mind, it produced some of the most exciting championship battles, but it was also fair in the same sense. Come 2014, we have an even newer format and an even worse format. Um, so 2013, if you remember, Richmond, Spingate happened. Clint Boyer spun on purpose. Uh, Brando Caution first teammate Martin Truex Jr. Truex ended up making the chase, which knocked out Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman. Well, also there's more going on back there. Apparently, Roger Penske and the 38 of Gillen had a little, or whoever it was, had a little bit of a plan there to try. And apparently, there's money on the line for the 38 team if they had laid over and gave Legano a position. In fact, that position helped Legano get the wild card spot for the championship. Knocked Jeff Gordon and Ryan Newman out because of that. Gordon out on points, Newman out of his wild card spot. Newman was going to win the race. Gordon was going to finish inside the top five. On the restart, Edwards took over the lead. Trix got ahead of the drivers he needed to get ahead of, and he was one of the ten drivers. Newman was out. Well, here's where it came in. Once that was found out what happened, that Clint Boyer spun on purpose, NASCAR removed Mark Trix Jr. from the chase, even though he had no, he, he had no, you know, no role in how this happened. Um, also, what happened was Legano got to keep his spot in the chase, even though there was clear manipulation with that. Um, also, uh, Ryan Newman got added, which was the 12th driver. And then NASCAR says, well, Jeff Gordon probably would have been in, so let's just throw him in too. And uh, that really started the downfall of that chase format because of the manipulation. Come 2014, we have this new win and you're in format. Uh, you know, 16 drivers. It ends up being some weird drivers do get in. Eric Amarola based off his win at Daytona in the rain. A.J. Allendaren with his Watkins Glen win. Uh, so those are really drivers that probably shouldn't have been in, but they were anyway. Uh, it ended up Kevin Harrick was champion. He was one of the better drivers all season, but he definitely wasn't the best driver. Come 2015, the format produces a ton of controversy. The most controversy a points format has probably ever produced. Jimmy Johnson, in the first round of the chase, ends up getting eliminated due to a part failure at Dover. His chase is over due to one small part failure at Dover. Kevin Harvick, who wrecked at Chicagoland and finished in the 30s, ran out of field at New Hampshire and finished in the 20s or the 30s, was so many points behind the cutoff that he needed to win 
to get in. He ends up winning. He had two bad races he's into the next round because of one win. Even if, he, even if he finished second, he wasn't going to advance. Then come the second round. Joey Logano spins out Matt Kenseth. Or Joey Logano wins Charlotte, gets in the next round. Next race, Kansas. Joey Logano spins out Matt Kenseth late in the race. Logano goes on to win. At Talladega, we have a ton of controversy there as well. Denny Hamlin's roof hatch. An issue for that thing it popped up or something, so they had to come down and fix it. They lost numerous laps, and since the race went caution-free pretty much all the race, I think the only two cautions before the whole end saga was for blown engines. Um, and then Denny Hamlin, who had finished second at Charlotte and second at Kansas, was now on the outside of the chase looking in. Meanwhile, Kyle Busch is on the outside of Dale Jr. wins. Kevin Harvick is barely in. And they have other drivers, Matt Kenseth, who's down there because he had two bad races. Junior's down there because he had two bad races, and so on and so forth. What ends up happening, a yellow comes out from McMurray blowing his engine as Greg Biffle is potentially going to win on fuel mileage. Sets up a restart. This is when NASCAR had their one attempt at a green-white checker. On the restart, Legano brake checks the field, uh, stacks the whole field up. A few cars go spinning. They throw the yellow. They did not get to the start-finish line. The ruling is that was not an attempt, uh, which is something that... Once again, controversy. They said one attempt, and now they're going to say that's not an attempt. Um, so then they go again. Legano goes. Harvick, meanwhile, in the back, is having issues with his car. He's going just as fast as pace car speed, practically. Something with the engine happening, some sort of weird, the ECU, whatever. It was blowing up, basically. He's restarting in the middle of the field in about 14th. The first attempt at the green white checker, he pulled out of the way and let the whole field go on by. Well, since that wasn't an attempt, he got his positions back. The problem is... The 48 and the 5 and all of them, they didn't get their positions back even though they wrecked. So, um, come to the green for the attempt. Harvick in line. Instead of pulling out of line, he stays in line. Bain goes to his outside knowing that the 4 is slow. Harvick turns right, wrecks the 6 into the field. The yellow comes out. And Logano and Dale Jr. are side by side and Jr. misses it or makes it, depending on how you looked at it, by the length of a splitter. As Kevin Harvick goes on to advance, Logano sweeps the round of 3 or the sweeps uh, second round, and uh, that sets up a lot of more controversy because Clint Boyer, when he spun in 2013, ended up, you know, that changed the whole picture and, you know, people got knocked out, people got put in. Here in 2015, Harvick manipulates the end of the race, screws a driver out of what was probably going to be a win and getting himself into the next round. Harvick ends up making it, and then this is where the playoff points kind of come into play. If he had playoff points, if playoff points were a thing back then, he probably wouldn't have needed to because he was so dominant. He had like 25 top five finishes that season. It was ridiculous. He, like, he, he probably finished top 10 all but like two races that season. Like he was just so strong. And uh, he was just, he was 55 miles an hour to make to the next round. And that was something they shouldn't have been in the position to even be in at the first place. But he was because of how bad the format was. So then... After all that happens, Kenseth wrecks Logano from the lead at Martinsville. Logano then blows tire at Texas, can't re rebound at Phoenix. And then Kyle Busch, who missed a third of the season. Jeff Gordon, who had a lackluster season. Martin Shrex Jr. and Kevin Harvick are in the final four. What happens? But Kyle Busch, after missing a third of the season, wins the championship. Under any other format, he would have been 20th. The next season, 2016, Jimmy Johnson was your champion. Jimmy Johnson would have finished eighth in full season points. Had it, you know, gone like that. Then they changed the format again in 2017. Stages and playoff points carry out throughout every round now. So instead of resetting back to zero at every round, you reset back to your playoff points. And that has been a lot better in terms of the chase. Uh, so far, we've only had it for one season. Mark Trex Jr. would have won both championships no matter what. He has had the strongest season. So the thing is, this playoff format, it's not the fairest format at all. In fact, it's probably the least fair format of any format the NASCAR could think of. And um, manipulation, you know, stupid things. Um, it's not a format for me. Um, I don't like the format. I probably never have. In fact, I probably didn't even like the format back in 2014. I probably only was neutral on it until I saw how it worked in the chase. When I saw how it worked, I didn't like it. Here's the thing. In 2014, Jeff Gordon, a second at Martinsville, a second at Phoenix. At Texas, he finishes 27th after like a spin after running top three. He ends up missing the final four because Newman, who had been a nobody the whole season, dive bombs Larson and makes the final four. Newman, who had not won a race that season in a format which winning was everything, almost won the championship. He got second 
in the championship. Ryan Newman got second in the championship. Let that sink in. Um, so, as I've said, and as many of you know, if you watch my NR 2003 races, you know that the 2011, 2012, 2013 format of the chase is my favorite. Why? Because it's produced champions that, in my mind, are the most fair or has been the most exciting. 2011 it came down to a tie between Tony Stewart and the driver who probably should have won the championship, Carl Edwards. In 2012, Kozlowski won the championship in a battle with Jimmy Johnson, and he would have won it anyway in the full season. In 2013, it was Jimmy Johnson and Matt Kenseth, the two best cars all season. Well, Johnson ended up winning the championship in both formats. So, because that's my favorite format, I decided to go back and revisit this year's chase and see how it would play out under a format like that. So, 16 drivers in my mind, way too much. Why have 16 drivers in a championship um, that's like most of the field? You have like 20 cars in, a, in any given week that could finish top 10. You're putting 16 of them inside the chase. That's way too much. 10 or 12 is the perfect amount. I'm going to go with the 12 for the wild cards. So in on the top 10, we have obviously Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Martin Trix Jr., Brad Kozlowski, Clint Boyer, Joey Logano, Kurt Busch, Ryan Blaney, Kyle Larson, and Denny Hamlin. The wild cards would have been Chase Elliott with his win at um, his win at Watkins Glen and Eric Jones with his win at Daytona. The four drivers who have made the chase uh, uh, under the format we have now that would be out under this format, Eric Amarola, Jimmy Johnson, Alex Bowman, and Austin Dillon. They were all beneath the top 12 in points, I believe. I think Amarola may have been 12th and Jones was 13th and Jimmy and Bowman were like 14th and 15th and Dillon was back in 19th. Like he doesn't deserve to even have a shot at the championship. Um, so throughout the rounds... I calculated the points up. What I used for this was I used their playoff points that they got after uh, the brickyard, put them in, and uh, that's the points they started with. So no one was really zeroed out. It was That's what they started with. So if you got playoff points, depending on where you were in the uh, regular season points, how many wins you got, how many stage wins you got, whatever. Um, the thing that I don't really know what to do with would be the stage the stages during the chase because if you get a, if you win a stage that's only one, one point and the playoff point doesn't matter because the points never reset so that'd be something that maybe they would have to look at depending on how how it goes but um after six races in this format the top four are probably the four drivers i would say deserve this championship the most under the format that that i really like this 2011 2013 format and in my mind, there's probably only about four, five, six drivers that would have a shot at the championship, but that's still six drivers. I think even five is pushing it. I think really the, these four drivers would probably be the four fighting for the championship in these final four races of the season. So throughout six races of the chase, Kevin Harvick has gained 263 points and would be the points leader. It's kind of like how he is now. Joey Logano would be second. He gained 252 points, so he's 11 points behind. Martin Truex Jr., even after his horrible uh, round of the, the second round, he would still be third. He's only 14 points back. Kyle Busch would be down in fourth, 25 points back. Kurt Busch would be fifth, 43 points back. Chase Elliott would be sixth, 49 points back. Blaney, seventh, 57 back. Clint Boyer, eighth, 60 back. Kislowski 75 back. Larson, 86 back. Hamlin, 104 back. And Jones, 115 back. Really... I think if you're someone like Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, your chance at a championship basically over under this format. So, in reality, Kevin Hart, Joe Legano, Truex, Kyle Busch, all four of them are in this final eight. There was probably one driver, or probably a few drivers, that really wouldn't deserve to be there in the round of eight. Chase Elliott, you know, he probably doesn't deserve it. Lately, he's deserved it, but I don't know. And then, obviously, Eric Amarola. I mean, he has, like, what, three top five finishes this season? I don't think that's really championship material, in my opinion. Um, but once again, as I mentioned, this format, these are probably the four drivers that have been the best all season. We have Kevin Harvick, who has 25 top 10s tied for the most and 19 top fives has seven wins. I mean, he's led like, or excuse me, that's Kyle Busch. Kevin Harvick has the most top fives of 20, tied with 25 top 10s, seven wins, and uh, he, he's led the most laps, over 1,600 laps led. And then we go to Joey Logano, who, in my opinion, has been the most consistent driver this season. 23 top 10s. He has only two less than Kyle Busch or Kevin Harvick. And he has 10 top 5s. Obviously, that's a lot less than those. But still, that's like the fourth most top top 5s or whatever. He's led laps. He has a win. I mean, he's been very consistent. He has a great average finish of 10.7. Also, Martin Truex Jr., 
who has 18 top fives and 18 top tens, his four victories, he would be third in points, 14 points back. Once again, another driver who would deserve it. And then Kyle Busch, uh, who is fourth right now, 19 top fives, 25 top tens, seven wins. Those are the four drivers, in my opinion. You have two, Kyle Busch and Kevin Harker, who dominated. Martin Truex Jr. has just kind of been there as like the third driver. And the Joey Logano has been the most consistent, quiet driver there is. Those are probably the four drivers fighting in these final four races to get the most points. Instead, we have winning, you're in. If you win Martinsville, you don't have to worry about Texas or Phoenix. You're going straight to Homestead. And that's another bad thing. One race decides it all. Why should one race decide it all in a format like this? It's pretty stupid, in my opinion. Uh, I've never liked this new playoff format. I've, in fact, you know, as I've mentioned so many times, hated it. And I really love if we went back to a format that wasn't broken. And, in fact, you know, award consisting awards, stuff like that. I mean, as of now... These four drivers that would be fighting, I could, I could, you know, say, hey, you, you four really would deserve it. Like under a format like this, you four probably would deserve it. I mean, looking at, if I look at how the points look after Kansas, like the the full season, because it, uh, some do that. Right now, the top four in the points in full season points would be Kyle Busch, sixteen and a half, Kevin Harvick, Mark Truex Jr. in third, and Joey Logano fourth. And then guess who'd be fifth? Kurt Busch. Right now. The five drivers who are top five under the 2011-2013 chase would be top five in a full season points format. But now instead we have under the chase, Kyle Busch, Kevin Harker, Martin Truex Jr., and Chase Elliott advancing to Homestead with Clint Boyer, Kurt Busch, Joe Legault, and Eric Amarillo, the ones that are out. So, once again, this, the, 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 this format that we have now, the only thing I think I can say about it, the only thing a good I can say about it is it produces excitement, albeit fake excitement, and it also does reward consistency a little bit more than its previous iteration from 2014 to 2016. I think the stages have really helped in terms of making sure the better cars, you know, advance through to the uh, the rounds and try and get to the final round. Because in my opinion, Kevin R. Kyle Busch should definitely be a lock for, uh, the, you know, the, the final four at Homestead. But in all reality, one of them might not make it. I mean, that it's a, it's a long shot. But someone, someone of them might not make it. Clint Boyer could go out and win at Martinsville. And then Chase Elliott could go win at, like, Texas. And then say someone like Truex goes and... And say Truex goes and wins Texas, and then Chase goes and wins Phoenix. Then that's only one spotted on points. And Kevin Ark and Kyle Busch, they're the two that are going to be fighting for it. But they should be fighting for the championship instead. So, in my mind, it's not a fair format. It's a lot more fair than its previous iteration, though, because... You kind of look at it, you know, you kind of see drivers like, you know, okay, you know, Keselowski, he probably wouldn't deserve it. He's, you know, 75 points back. Larson, he probably wouldn't deserve it. He's 86 back. You know, Blaney, Blaney's probably a little bit more of a case where you could say, well, maybe he should have made the round of eight, but he's 57 points back. You know, Chase Elliott probably doesn't deserve it. He's 49 points back. But, I mean, you know, th- there are drivers who wouldn't be fight you know factors for a championship and they're not under this format that's the one good thing i could probably say about it is that at least it somewhat rewards you know performing well in these final 10 races i mean once again jones hamlin have been eliminated in round one larson was also eliminated last round kozlowski was eliminated last round blaney was eliminated last round so i mean like those are drivers that probably wouldn't have shots at the championship no matter what no matter what format you put them in, they probably wouldn't have a shot. Under this format, they wouldn't have a shot. Under the 2011 format, they wouldn't have a shot. I mean, most likely, unless everyone, unless for some reason Harvick finishes last every race and then Kozlowski or Boyer or someone like that, you know, wins every race. But once again, they probably wouldn't have a shot under, they definitely wouldn't have a shot under, underneath the full season. That would just be Kevin or Kyle Busch in a, you know, head-to-head battle. Under 2011 format, they wouldn't have a shot. And under this format, they wouldn't have a shot. So at least they kind of does that. But once again, the negatives outweigh the positives, in my opinion, with this format. So... I mean, we could see, for all we know, Eric Amarillo win the championship because of, you know, he could go out and win Martinsville and then go win Homestead, win three races in the season, have like, you know, six top fives, and oh, you're the champion. It's, you know, pretty stupid. But I thank you guys for watching. Uh, That's my opinion on the playoff chase format, whatever you want to call it. Comment um, your ideas or your feelings about this format below. If you hate it, if you love it, I don't know. Uh, So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys for the next video.